In this lecture, we are going to learn what do we mean by password hashing and salting. And again, this is going to be a theoretical lecture and we will learn all the important points to know about hashing and salting a password. So let's first start by understanding what do we mean by hashing. Now, when a user registers to our application through sign up or registration process, the user will also have to provide a password while creating his account. Now, the user is going to provide a plain text as the password during the registration. But when the web application is saving that password in the database, we should never save that password as plain text in the database because of the security concerns. If for any reason a hacker gets access to your database, he will have access to the username or email of the user and the plain password and the hacker can use it to log into your application as a valid user using other users credentials. Not only that, if the developer of your application also has access to the database where the user details are saved, he can see the username and the plain password of each and every user. And if the developer has a malicious intent, he can use any of those users credential like the username and the plain password to log into the application and do something unethical. As you can see, currently in our Nest.js web API application, whenever we are creating a user, we are taking the username of the user, email of the user and password of the user. Now from the client, the user is providing a plain text as the password. And we are saving that same plain text password in the database also. And we should never do that. For a secure application, you should never save a plain password as it is in the database because it has several security risks. Now, to avoid these security risks, we must hash the user password from the API before saving it in the database. So, Hashing of a password is the process of transforming a user's password into a seemingly random string of characters of fixed length using a mathematical algorithm called as hash function. And this resulting string is known as a hash or a message digest. So for example, in a secure application, when a user registers through a client, the client can be browser or your postman application, anything. So during the registration, when the user provides his username, email and password, all other details are saved as it is. But before saving the password, the password is first hashed. That means using this password, a random fixed length string is generated. And that generated string is called as hash. You can also call it as hashed password. So this hashed password will be saved in the database instead of saving the plain password. Now, let's talk about some key characteristics of a hashed password. First of all, regardless of the length of the input password, the resulting hash will always have a specific predetermined length. That means it does not matter if your password is of 8 characters, 10 characters, 12 characters or 20 characters. The hashing algorithm is always going to generate a random string of same length. So we can say that hashing is the process of generating a fixed size output from a variable size input. Another thing which you need to remember is hashing is a one way function. That means once a string is hashed from that hashed string, you cannot get the original string. So it's practically impossible to reverse the hashing process and obtain the original password from its hash. Remember that it's not an encryption process which can be decrypted. So the question is, how will you compare a string password with the hashed password whenever a user tries to log in? The answer is the same input will generate the same hashed password. Okay, so the same input will always produce the same output, the same hash, provided it is using the same hashing algorithm. So during the login, when the user will provide his username and password from the client, he's going to provide the plain password. But in the database, a hashed password is saved. So while comparison, you again hash the password provided during the login 
and then you compare it with the hashed password saved in the database because as we learned same input will always produce the same output hash so during the login we take the plain password from the login request we again hash it and then we compare that hashed password with the hashed password saved in the database okay and if they match that means the password is correct otherwise the password is not correct now in this section in this course we are going to use bcrypt algorithm to hash as well as compare the hashed password and you will see that in the next lecture so we will learn how to use bcrypt algorithm to hash the password before saving it in the database and we will also learn how to use the same bcrypt algorithm to compare passwords also remember that we are not going to dive into how internally the hashing algorithm works that is completely out of the scope of this course however if you are still interested in learning about the internal working of hashing algorithm there are many good articles available online which you can refer to now in order to make guessing the password difficult and avoid rainbow table attack we add something known as salt while hashing the password password salting is a security technique used during the process of password hashing and it involves adding a unique randomly generated string known as a salt to each password before it is hashed this combined value of password and the salt string is then passed through a cryptographic hash function to produce the final hashed password that is stored in the system's database so salt is added to hashed password it is basically prefixed with hash and it contains some random string it is a fixed length string which contains random characters the salt is added to hash to make the hash string more difficult to get plain password out of it so whenever you try to hash a password with bcrypt algorithm you can also add salt to it and it will return you the concatenated hashed password which is strong and more secure so from our nestjs web api application whenever we are going to save a user we are first going to hash the plain password of that user we are going to add salt to it and generate more secure hashed password and then we are going to save that hashed password in the database now let me show you an example of how a hashed string looks like so here this is an example of hashed string here this first part which is followed by a dollar this is a number or letter indicating the bcrypt algorithm version then you see we have another dollar and there we have this number 10 so this part of the hashed string is called as cost factor so the cost factor represents the number of rounds used in hashing process so this value determines the computational cost for generating the hash a higher cost factor means more round of hashing common values range from 10 to 12 but higher values can be used for increased security at the cost of more processing time during user authentication then after that this part of the hashed string it represents the salt string as we learned salt string is prefixed to the hashed password string so this is a unique randomly generated string added to the password before hashing it prevents the use of rainbow tables and make it harder for attackers to crack multiple passwords even if they share the same original value and finally we have the hashed password so this is a 31 character length string also encoded in base 64 now you don't need to go in the internals of how a hashed string looks like i just wanted to show this to you for the basic understanding now before we wrap up this lecture let's also see how the plain password provided during the login will be compared with the hashed password saved in the database so here when a user will try to log into our application he will make a request to the login api and with the login request he is going to provide email or username and the password now during login the user is providing the plain password but in the login api this api will fetch the hashed password from the database for that given user 
and then it is going to call a compare function which will compare the plain password with the hashed password and this compare function should return true or false now here during the comparison before comparing the plain password to hashed password this plain password will also get converted to its hash and then it will be compared with the hashed password and the reason it will work is because we have learned the same input string is always going to generate the same hash string so all this we will learn practically in our coming lectures all right so this was a high level theoretical overview of how we are going to hash the password on the user sign up save it and use it for comparison during login this is all from this lecture let's start implementing the hashing logic and user sign up functionality from our next lecture this is all from this lecture thank you for listening and have a great day